Welcome to one of the best Ukrainian restaurants in all of New York City. The name is Veselka and has been a staple since 1954. So many, many decades has been quite one of the most popular iconic places in the East Village. And we're having a beef stragonov with some egg noodles and some uh, Ukrainian beet horseradish salad. Uh, I'm so hyped for this. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. And we're also having a Polish beer. They didn't have any Ukrainian beers on tap, but the closest thing is some Polish, which is nice. The restaurant is gorgeous. And because of the entire conflict, uh, a lot of people have been coming out and giving their support. So we have a lot of people here. Usually it gets a little bit more packed during the nighttime, but now it's packed all the time. All right, let's eat. Welcome everyone, nice to see you here. Um, in light of recent events, I wanted to say that violence is never the answer. And a lot of people have been uh, worried about what's happening in Ukraine, including myself. And I hope everything comes to back to peaceful terms once again. Uh, and I have a lot of urbanists that are from the Ukraine, such as Oleg, and uh, there's another Oleg also on Facebook, and there's many others that tune in from the Ukraine, and uh, my wishes are with them. Uh, one of them did reach out saying that he's watching even amidst the conflict as a way to escape, uh, because the show does provide escape for many people. So, violence is never, never the answer. But what is the answer is good food. Wherever you are, good food does wonders. So let's have uh, some amazing Ukrainian food in hopes that the world will gain peace once again and that um, Ukraine will stand strong. So cheers with some Polish beer. <laughs> It's, it's kind of light, it's more like a lager. I'm not quite the biggest fan of uh, laggers, but it's nice and refreshing. Good for a pint with some food. But we're gonna have an iconic food first, which is a stragonov. I haven't had stragonov in a while. Uh, and this is the first time I have it with egg noodles. Usually it comes with like a uh, mashed potato of sorts. Of course, stragonov is eaten in Russia, in Ukraine, Poland, all that entire area of uh, Eastern Europe. So it's a very popular dish in Central Asia as well. So let me show it to you. So it's a beef, it's a beef uh, sauteed in mushroom cream sauce. I like it because the cream sauce is not too creamy which is good, so the focus is still on the beef. It's almost like a nice beef pasta, I love this. And nice egg noodles, very soft, freshly made egg noodles. And it's garnished as well. And then this beet salad, the Ukrainians are very well known for making a lot of beets, such as borscht and this beet salad. All right, without further ado, let's try it out. So let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you had uh, Ukrainian food before. Um, we're in an area called Little Ukraine in New York City, which has been a Ukrainian neighborhood for almost 100 years. Uh, one of the very first Ukrainian congregations, for example, was back in 1898. So Ukrainians started coming here at least in the 1890s. Oh, wow. The garnish, which might be parsley, adds a, I think it's parsley, adds a whole lot of um, freshness to the bite. Really good steak, really good beef, nice and tender. And apparently slow cooked, and I could tell it's slow cooked, it's nice and soft when you bite into it. The pasta is very thin, almost kind of falls apart once you bite into it. Mmm! Oh wow! 
and that's amazing. I really miss beef bagwano. You know, traveling through Eastern Europe, it could be very hit or miss when it comes to food. Because unfortunately, um, some countries don't quite have as many resources as, say, Western Europe or, or America. Uh, so I've had some of very bad beef stragonov <laughs> in my past, and this one does really kind of uh, make up for all the terrible beef stragonov I've tried in the past, both in America and in Eastern Europe. I haven't been to the Ukraine yet, but I've been to other parts of Eastern Europe with some terrible stragonov. Hello, Oleg. Hey, oh, is Oleg actually tuning in? Welcome, Oleg. Um, Oleg is tuning in. Hey, Oleg, thank you so much for tuning in right now. Uh, from, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Dnipro, Dnipro, uh, Ukraine. Thank you for all your support. My pleasure, Oleg. If you want to support the Ukrainian community here, come to Vesaka. There's a few other amazing restaurants. Go to Untapped Cities. They have a list of the best Ukrainian spots here in the East Village and in New York overall. But I'm so glad Oleg is tuning in. Oleg, hope you're doing safe. Hope your family's safe. I uh, hope you're um, able to get out of the conflict yourself. All right, let's try a little bit more. So welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome Lion Judea. Welcome Irene, Bella, Nick. Uh, Nick, no politics on the broadcast. Um, happy to answer any questions about food, architecture, travel. Lorraine, welcome to the live video. Within 10 days by April 8th, this will be over. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I hope I hope that's the case. Mater, nice to see you here. It's great to see so much support for the Ukrainian people, says Kay. Kay, welcome. Linda, nice to see you here as well. Yes. Um, this place gets full. It's very popular. Popular with tourists, popular with locals. Um, popular with people who just moved in, and popular with people who've been living here for decades. But it never really got this packed during the day, especially on the weekday. Now, luckily, it's getting packed all the time. I have a little bit of parsley in my teeth. But yeah, now it's getting packed all the time. And it's good to see that. <laughs> For, if you're a local New Yorker, it kind of sucks because you're not used to waiting. There's like a line around the corner. Uh, but I'm glad. There, there, it, it is positive. Hmm. So good, let's try this beet salad. Oh my god. I should have not taken that big of a bite. This beet and horseradish. That's a lot of horseradish. You don't know how horseradish tastes. Tastes similar to biting into pure mustard. Oh my god. Ooh. Eat this slowly. Not spicy, but it'll make you tear up. Lion says makes it makes your eyes water. Oh yeah. I'm getting emotional. For the for for the food, for the great people of Ukraine, and because of the horseradish. So there's a piece of eggplant here? Oh, this is a mushroom. This is a gigantic mushroom. Let's try it out. Strong, even small bite too strong. Marianne says it clears the sinuses. It does. So strong detox. Yeah. Judas says that is strong. Oh yeah. The beet is raw cooked. It appears to be raw beets. It doesn't appear to be cooked at any point. Not like a borscht soup. Actually, I think borscht is cold as well. So never mind. John says, please let me know what you're eating. Beet stragonov. And uh, Oleg and um, any Ukrainians out there or Eastern Europeans, 
because a lot of that region has very similar food. Let me know, what other bites should I try to eat? Uh, other dishes, what's a great, great Ukrainian dish? Aside from beef stragonov and this uh, beef or portrait is salad. Marianne recommends stuffed cabbage. Oh yeah, stuffed cabbage. I actually never tried that. I've tried. I love um, I love sauerkraut. So here in little Ukraine, as I mentioned, the, the the community goes back as far as 1890s. Of course, in New York, there's always been people coming here from all around the world, but in mass, a lot of Ukrainians started coming here really uh, during World War II era, and. Here, a third of the population still lives within little Ukraine, the entire Ukrainian population in all of New York City. And that is about 60,000 people, so there's quite a lot of people, uh, Ukrainian, in the entire New York City. And here, a third of them live here. Wendy says, well, good sauerkraut. Hey, Siren, thank you so much for tuning the stars. Uh, Netogino says try pierogies. I love pierogies. I've featured Visaka many times. I think I've featured it three times already. Uh, and I love the pierogies. My favorite dish here in the entire restaurant is the short rib fried pierogies. Try them out. They'll blow you away. Uh, but I decide to go for a beef stagonoff, which I haven't featured yet. Because I always go for the pierogies. Hey, Robert says, uh, Brighton Beach has a lot of Ukrainian restaurants. Yes, a lot of Russian restaurants as well. Judith says, uh, cute turtleneck. It, uh, it's elegant. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, feel free to ask me any questions whatsoever. I'm going to continue biting a little bit more into this. I don't have too much to say. Oh, um, about the food or, or Ukraine, but the only thing I really do want to see at some point in my life is see more of the Ukraine because unfortunately a lot of cities are being devastated, but hopefully they can rebuild. And um, I was astonished by how beautiful cities like Kiev look and their amazing public transportation in the architecture. I was really, really stunned by that. There's a few other YouTubers out there who covered it extensively, uh, like Bold and Bankrupt, and uh, there's another woman who's a live streamer who's covered it extensively. And uh, I'm just blown away every time I see a video about it. So hopefully I'll come back where uh, one can visit again. John says it's very hard to hear because of the noise. Oh yes, it is very noisy. Lynn says it's going to take uh, years to rebuild the country, uh, unfortunately. Lorraine says, cute man in the turtle life. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Appreciate that. Johnny FD moved to Kiev, says Robert. Yeah, that, that kind of blew me away. Uh, is the guy, I think the guy's Canadian or American. Um, and he moved to the Ukraine, which is during this time, uh, kind of shocking. Going to take years to rebuild the uh, DS. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Are the, uh, Adriana Argentina. Oh, bienvenidos. Gracias por viendo de Argentina. Thank you so much for watching from Argentina. Veronica says, uh, Susie, we have to try this place. Yes, you do have to try this place, Veronica. And uh, Marianne says, the hot cabbage. Lynn says, I love borscht. Yes. I was tempted to go have borscht as well. And Judith says, we have a nice beer. Thank you so much, Judith. MTS says, uh, super great idea. 
Ariel, what is distinguishing about Ukrainian food? That's a great question, Susie. So I, I'm not well researched into the food or to the culture in general, but from my personal experience, because I've been living here in New York City my entire life and I've been exposed to Ukrainian food and other foods, it's very similar to Polish food as well and very similar to Russian food. And I've been to uh, Romania specifically and Hungary and also found many of these dishes also in those countries. So there's a lot of overlap with all those countries. But of course they have their own regional differences. I think what makes um, Ukrainian food stick out more is the use of beets. They really beat the other countries in using beets. Janina, nice to see you here. A lion of Judea says, have you ever been to Peter Luger? I'd love to see you do a steak. I've been tempted to go Peter Luger. You gotta make the reservations ahead of time. And um, and it's gotten so, such low reviews <laughs> that I'm tempted to find another steak restaurant. So I'm gonna see if I can cover Keens at some point. Inspire Life, nice to see you here. Welcome to the live video. Diaz says, what you order? Beef Stragono. Susie says, yes, I'm waiting for a, a Peter Luger live stream. Oh, yeah. Johnny, I'm doing well. Welcome. And Susie says, Re I recommend the lasagna stream. Oh, yeah. Spotman says, uh, Peter Luger got a bad review. Yeah, they're getting bad reviews on, on Google reviews from individuals and publications, including the New York Times that gave them a terrible one-star review so yeah they, they've been getting very bad press so for people who don't know Peter Luger is one of two iconic steak houses in New York City Peter Luger is based in Williamsburg Brooklyn it's about 100 years old the other one being Keens in uh, Midtown Manhattan two most iconic steak restaurants Keens is still famous very high-end and Peter Luger is a little bit more affordable but has been a very terrible press. BB says, Din, didn't see any of your UK trip. I'm not back. I am indeed back. Hello, Faith. Nice to see you here. Do they add wine to their beef sauce? This one does not have wine. I've tried, I've tried beef stargonoffs with wine. This one does not have wine. This is just a cream mushroom sauce. Morgan, celebrate seven months of membership. Morgan, thank you so much for being a member for seven months. Morgan says, you must go. At least have the Peter Luger burger, says Susie. I, I've heard that, it's very good. The DS asks, what borough am I in? I'm in the borough of Manhattan, and there's a neighborhood of the East Village. The neighborhood also has a uh, part of the neighborhood has a nickname of Little Ukraine. Richard says, I like their homemade chicken uh, soup. So they have a pretty extensive menu. Uh, their pierogies are great, and they have a variety of pierogies. I recommend the shortbread pierogies. Uh, but they also have uh, sandwiches, and they have classic New York City items, such as egg creams. Which, if you haven't had an egg cream, it has no egg, no cream, but it's really good. And DS has a nice neighborhood. Yes, it is indeed a nice neighborhood. Very beautiful neighborhood. DSS are those new glasses? No, they're not. Mira says, um, big portion. I hope it's tasty. It's really tasty. 
It is a big portion. It's really tasty. Do you ever do Yonkers as swap menu? I, I, I do places where I can walk around. I think Yonkers might have an area I can walk around, but no, not, not usually. Oleg says it's a great fusion of cultures and cuisines in Europe, Turkey, Asian uh, countries, and so on. And it's hard to define the origins of some dishes. And Polish cuisine is closest to ours. Yes, Oleg. So, for example, pierogies, there, there's a version of the history saying that it was spread by the Mongolians because the Mongolians invaded China and China had dumplings. And the Mongolians, since they had the largest continuously uh, con contiguous, hard words pronounced, but the largest by land area empire in the world, they spread dumplings all around that area of the world, all the way to Poland and Hungary. But that's one version of the story. More the Chinese uh, centered version of the story. Kate says, what, what type of desserts do they serve? They serve a few different desserts. The cheesecake is really, really good. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have space with the, for the cheesecake after having this gigantic meal. Uh, but the cheesecake is really good. The blints are also really good. Beatrice says, good afternoon. Mel Melody says, looks, looks like a pretty afternoon. It is super cold, I have a gigantic Gigantic uh, jacket. It's way too cold. We have another Oleg tuning in. Oleg from uh, Oleg, hope you're doing safe as well. Oleg on Facebook, we have two Olegs. I assume Oleg is a very popular name, like Michael is in the US. Uh, Oleg, thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you too. Hope you're doing well. Hope your family is safe. Hope, hopefully, um, you guys will be able to recover. Ida says hello Ariel, amazing. I didn't know New York City had many Ukrainian restaurants. I'm not sure about the word, I'm not sure if it's many, but there is there is two hubs of Ukrainian foods. East Village here by Vasalka, there's like three more of the main restaurants in this immediate area. And Brighton Beach, as someone mentioned uh, before. Beatrice, welcome. I'm eating beef stragonov in little Ukraine, and I am getting full already. It's a lot of steak that they put on there. Richard says, do they have seafood? No. Ukraine is a landlocked country. I mean, it has a gigantic sea, but it's landlocked. Uh, aside from its connection to a gigantic sea, that's it. So, I don't think there's that much seafood, unless if, the, uh, if anyone can remind me what the sea is underneath Ukraine. Is it called the Crimean Sea? But that sea, I'm not sure if it has seafood. You let me know. Once it cools down and the sauce kind of also cools, it actually tastes really good. It has a similar effect to great Italian American pasta. When it cools down, you get a different kind of flavor. Oh, it says, I hope you enjoyed the food at the restaurant. I really do. It's amazing. I'm really impressed by the pasta as well. Jane says, wow, see it, that's all, says Jeannie, is it the black sea? Do you cook at home and post as spot? Nope, no, I, I do cook at home, but I don't really post my channels about exploring places all around the world. It's the black sea, thank you so much, Robert. Yeah, is there fish in the black sea? Let me know. I, as, as I mentioned, I don't know too much about that region of the world. I'm not that well researched in that area. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I gotta use my microphone in these places. No to self. So Inkspire Life says, I'm looking forward to your trip to the West Coast. I'm so glad you are Inkspire Life. So everyone, stay tuned. The second week of April is when I'm going live in the West Coast of the US. You're gonna find out what's the area. Stay tuned. I mean, who knows what we'll find in the West Coast. We might find some woods. We might find maybe a mountain. I hope there's no teenage wastelands because that would be very bad news. So hopefully we'll find some good food and some good coffee in the West Coast. So stay tuned, second week of April. If you want to find out what the location is on April 1st, then uh, then you can become a super urbanist. Otherwise, you'll have to find out when I actually go live. So you have to be a super urbanist. Uh, Patreon.com slash urbanist. You'll be getting a sneak peek as to where I'm going, why I chose where I'm going, and why I choose, chose, choose, uh, choose places anyway. People are already making guesses. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm gonna drop a hint every live video until I go there. Uh, so. <laughs> I told you, there's gonna be, there's gonna be water. Uh, there's gonna be mountains. And um, there'll be like a tree. There's like trees in this location. Yeah. I also just think it's like a good thing to do in the world. Because, like, Faith says, thumbs up, thank you so much. Okay, everyone, I'll stick around for like three minutes. I can't, I can't fit in any dessert. This is really good food, highly recommend it. I didn't have too much to say today, but um, as I mentioned, I think the most important message is that violence is never the answer. In light of what happened at the Oscars, it is a very, very terrible thing that people think that violence is the answer or allow themselves to act violently. There's never an excuse for it. Uh, of course, one can defend themselves. And throughout history, there's instances where people had to defend themselves. But violence is never the answer. Offensive, going on the offense is never the answer. ¿Se parece a la comida de algún país de Ucrania? Mani, sí. So, para cualquier persona mirando en español, esto es comida de la Ucrania. Esto es una pasta hecha fresca. Aparentemente se hace con huevos. Y uh, esto es con uh, bistec. Y tiene una salsa de crema de hongo. Bien bueno. Uh, so, it's a mushroom cream sauce pasta with steak. Y también esto es hecho con beets. Yo no sé cómo se dice beets en español. But anyone can let me know how to say beets in Spanish. But uh, esto es una ensalada de beets. Jeannie says, uh, Black Sea does have some fish. Oh, it does look cool. Robert says, Oscar thing seems fishy to me. Yeah, it's very sad. Uh, Beatrice says, what is that you're holding? Beer. From the great country of Poland. Because they didn't have a Ukrainian beer. But they did have Polish beer. Close enough. Ah, Espiel, thank you so much. It's the Molancha. The Molancha. That's how I say it. The Molacha. The Molacha. The Molacha. Beats in Spanish. Thank you so much. And lady says eating time. Oh yeah, no walk today. I will be walking soon. Stay tuned. So the schedule will be April uh, Thursdays through Sundays at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. New York City time. 4 p.m. New York City. Wherever I am, it'll be 4 p.m. New York City time. All April. So stay tuned, including April 1st. We'll still be here for the first weekend, but then off to other places. Oleg left a message in Ukrainian. I don't know how read Ukrainian. I hope it's nice. Um, but thank you so much, Oleg. Yeah. 
when is the upcoming philosophical chat? Oh yeah, DS. So upcoming philosophical chat will be Friday at let's settle at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. I'll confirm, but 7 p.m. this Friday. Spotman says, do love your videos. I'm so glad. So glad. Everyone, so again, so sorry I didn't have too much to speak about, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is the Salka. Highly recommend it. As I mentioned, patreon.com slash urbanist. There's a bunch of bonus videos, including a full tour of the Museum of Moving Image uh, and many other museums. Full extensive tours. They're not posted publicly. So if you're really a, a person who really loves to travel, wants to travel even more vicariously than their rate offer on my live videos, patreon.com slash urbanist. And you'll find out my process in choosing places uh, to cover on Urbanist, including a reveal of where I'm going to next. So you'll be in the know when everyone else will be still wondering what's the place we're going to go to. So during this broadcast, I did drop some hints as to where I'm going, but anyway, stay tuned everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring and around the parts. Well, Marianne, thank you so much for 500 stars. One more time around the parts and send your best wishes and good vibes to the great Ukrainian people, um, our followers, Oleg and Oleg <laughs> and a few other people tuning in from the Ukraine. Uh, may you and your families be safe. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.